<clears throat> Greetings and salutations, everybody. Um, I've been having some weird issues with YouTube lately, so I hope this video actually finds its way to you. But for this one, I wanted to focus on another anthology film, similar to what I did a few weeks ago, I believe, with Creepshow 1 and 2. But this time, it's going to be for the 2007 film Trick or Treat. Now, this film was, you know, like I said, an anthology of five short stories, and um, first one being or first one of them being about a single father, high school principal, who kind of has a bit of a secret life. Um, we also have a story about a uh, college virgin who may have just found her right guy to uh, give herself over to, as it says in this story. Um, another one is about a group of teenagers who kind of pull a mean prank that goes a little bit too far and get what gets what gets uh, get what's coming to them. And we also have a, a woman who hates Halloween, but um, she has to kind of contend with the fact that her husband is very holiday obsessed and he loves everything about Halloween. And then finally, for the actual final story of this film is um, a story about this really mean old man and who's, he's kind of like met his match with this weird demonic supernatural trick-or-treater and he's got links to other parts of the film more on that in just a moment so this um <clears throat> with all five of those they were somehow able to fit those into only an 82 minute runtime and um like i said they weave into each other so you may see one character kind of meet their demise at one point and then you get another scene that's showing a flashback of a different story and you may see that character in the background so that's just one of the ways that they connect and then there's other you know callbacks happening within it now we do have some recognizable faces in it, um, such as Anna Paquin, who you may know from X-Men or The Piano or True Blood is uh, mainly where I know her the most from, as well as Brian Cox, who I'd seen in many things, but in recent years, he's definitely gained a lot more popularity because of how wildly famous uh, this, the uh, show Succession was, which just ended recently at the time of this video. And of course we have others who kind of pop up throughout it. Now. You know, I said this one is taking place during Halloween and it's being uh, and, you know, being centered around or inspired by some various Halloween urban legends and other stories. And this is where this one has kind of earned like a special place in my heart, actually. You know, I love anthologies. Like I said, one of my previous videos were um, about Creepshow part, parts one and two. You know, I love those. I love the Creepshow show on Shudder. I'm going to be starting up uh, season four of that hopefully this weekend. I got a lot of stuff on my plate to watch. Um, and even like shows like American Horror Story, because whether it's a season of that show or if it's the iteration American Horror Stories where each episode is different, if you don't like one of those installments, whether it's an episode or a season, you know there's always another one coming for you to try out. So there can be certain stories you don't like, certain ones that you really do. And the same thing, you know, with all anthology films, I feel like, you know, even looking at the Creepshow films, there are some installments within those that I like better than others. But, um, anyways, back to uh, Trick or Treat specifically. So, um, you know, like I said, this one is, you know, setting this on Halloween specifically for me kind of makes this one of those films I pretty much only watch during October or maybe in September from kind of leading up to Halloween since everything takes place around those times, you know. Um, I kind of put it along with those films like, you know, Halloween or, you know, the more family friendly Hocus Pocus, you know, where I feel more of a connection to those watching them around Halloween time. Of course, where does Nightmare Before Christmas fall into all this? Well, for me, that one's a Christmas film that I watch the day after Halloween since it begins after a successful Halloween and he's trying to lead up to Christmas. But again, I keep drifting from Trick or Treat specifically, which is a really fun film. So back to it, um, all of these stories are written really well, they're directed really well. We get a sense of kind of what's happening in that night, um, as well as some interesting backstories of some of the characters, um, you know, what tales they're spinning. We get um, some nice twists, particularly in the story about the Virgin and the story about that high school principal. The gore isn't really over the top, except for maybe one or two installments have a bit excessive gore in it. So if blood isn't really your thing, you may still be okay with this film as it's not persistent throughout it. There's actually an even grosser scene that has to do more with Halloween candy than it does with blood that I actually find a little bit more disgusting. So think um, with this film, think like Spirit Halloween, um, the store, not the movie. Um, and then we have some scary stuff, but not a it's not a bloody store, you know. So if you amp that up a little bit, making it look a little bit more realistic, that's about the level that this film will bring to you. And, um, you know, with each story in it, we get a little bit of mystery and little bits of comedy just kind of thrown in here and there to keep things light between any of the violent parts um, with a story for each one of those uh, entries in that makes you want to see where it's going, what kills are going to happen and so forth. And on top of that, we get the real star of the film, which is Samhain, which is um, sometimes referred to as Sam Hain or just simply as Sam. 
as he's kind of always lurking in the background before really popping into the story for the climax. So luckily, you know, if horror isn't specifically your thing, you know, that you have like a mild interest in it. Um, but if you're not really into it because you don't really care for a lot of blood and violence, but you want to have something that kind of rides that line for around the Halloween time, this takes you into that horror territory, but not so far that it overshadows anything happening within these stories. Um, you know, this is definitely one of those films that I think you might enjoy. You know, it gives you this feel for the season with some really fun stories that are definitely horror, definitely some blood and violence, but not so much that you may feel sick if you're not used to seeing it. Um, I've probably seen this film probably eight or ten times over the last 16 years, I guess, since it came out. And it's always been a lot of fun. You know, I, I'm not even sure if I have a favorite story within it. Probably the one with Anna Paquin because I really like the twist in that. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's definitely a lot of fun. So all in all, I mean, this is a this um, film has a lot of really good stories in it as an anthology. It's got some great directing in it as well. Um, it really sets the scene, uh, have some great performances, and um, you know, it really sets the mood of the season and is more than worth checking out. And speaking of checking out, thanks for checking out this latest quick entry here for Trick or Treat from 2007, which is currently on uh, both paid rental as well as HBO Max at the time of this uh, recording. And there's also been talks for over a decade now about um, possibly there being a sequel in development. So if that sounds interesting, go ahead and head on over and give it a watch. Maybe we'll even have a sequel in a, in a couple of years if they ever get it really going off the ground. But before signing off, um, what about you? Sound off in the comments. If you've seen this film, uh, how do you like it? Do you really enjoy it? Do you have any favorite, um, you know, favorite entries in this anthology? And speaking of anthologies, are there any other horror anthologies that you really like and would recommend? Um, whether it's full-on, really bloody violent horror, or even something that's much more uh, family-friendly. Anyways, thanks for coming by, and I will see you in the next one.